and welcome. You are listening to the Lie Love a Podcast. I'm Gunjan. I'm Rajiv. And today we will talk about uh, gender disparity. And I want to and start... equality, right? Uh, uh, I don't know. What? Long way to go, Rajiv. Long way to go. Let's let's peel that onion and see where we are. Okay. Yes, and I want to start with a little conversation that uh, my son and I we were having. We were coming from Gurdwara, and he just asked, "So." What do you call a teacher whose name is Amrit? And I'm thinking, Miss Amrit, Vish Amrit. I'm just thinking I couldn't give him the right answer. And he said, Amrit, sir, Mama, you're so sexist. You cannot even <laughs> imagine a male being uh, a teacher. And then I was like, yes, you're right. I cannot imagine. Stereotyping. Yes, stereotyping. And mm-hmm. this is what today's show is all about. And what my rant is that... If I have to get my work done, be it plumbing, electrician, or be it uh, from DM's office or anywhere, anywhere yeah. for that matter, why do I need a male figure with me? When someone is working, doing their job, they are paid for it or they will be paid for it. Even if I'm saying that, you know, this is not going in the right direction, you are not putting your 100% in, they will just not listen. They'll do whatever they want to do. On the Mm. contrary, if my dad, my husband, my father-in-law, my brother, anybody will go and they'll just go and stand there. Everybody will be working like, you know, it's their passion and they are just doing it for their passion or things like that. And I have not once, twice and not just in India, I have seen this attitude across globe. Oh, yeah. yeah. When you are talking. You know, you you can look at how, you know, you go and try to buy a car. If a woman goes to buy a car or to a mechanic or anything, you know, the, yeah, okay, let's talk about it because yes, stereotyping is very, very deep rooted. When, right. when somebody says that, you know, not just, you know, teacher, nurses. Exactly. You know, exactly. Why, why, why do we have stereotyped jobs, roles with specific genders? And long way to go, as we said, that people talk about equality. And this is the biggest lie I can say of our lives. Ki, you know, we have never uh, made any difference between you and your brother. And honestly, it's a big, yes. big lie. No, that difference came from there only because, again, whatever rules and regulations were for him. So you, So you are saying that we can never have equality. All I'm saying is it's a long way to go. At least we need that shift in mindset. So the, now my question is, you know, why do we need equality? Very controversial question. You know, it's, uh, because um, will we ever be equal in, you know, bi- biologically equal? Will Never. we ever be equal, you know, in, let's say, you know, many things that nature has designed us for? Mother Nature has designed us like that and we are different. When we talk about equality, we do not say that, you know, I am like a man or a manly figure or something like that. All I'm trying to say is what I'm saying should hold equal weightage compared to what my dad is saying or what my brother is saying. Okay, chalo, dad being an elderly person, he'll have a different weightage altogether. But if my brother and I, we are saying something, or if my husband and I, we are saying something, it should carry equal weightage. If but to I'm, whom? See, to the person so who is so, getting so, the work done. Okay, okay. So you're saying for a third person, you both should carry, I agree on that. But now, you know, when you're saying that, let's say, between friends, between parents, or between, you know, everything. You, you will carry two different weights. How can you... So my, you know, my actually take on this is that equality, first we need to understand what equality are we aiming for. And then figure out how best we can normalize. Rather than equality, I would say normalize. So for example... You know, at workforce, one of the things that I always faced, you know, and even today we see is that, you know, gender pay differences, right? Now, the question is that nobody says that everybody should be paid equal. 
I have two male, you know, reportees and now one female reportee to me. And then all three are paid differently. So then why would people call out that why is women paid differently? They both, they, all three may be, in, you know, the same level, the same scope of work, but performance will be different. So the question is that, you know, what are we aiming for? Are we aiming for equal opportunities? equal perception or are we aiming for that everybody should be able to do everything well uh rajiv coming to the point everyone should be able to do everything we are not we don't want to be jack of all there are certain tasks for which are assigned to certain people and if everyone is doing everything then we'll not nobody's doing anything, nobody <laughs> is doing anything and that that quality will miss so that see that so so, so what you're gone. saying is yeah so so what you're saying is you know and this i think is a good discussion to have because we get confused about what equality are we aiming for right and what you are talking about is equality in perception so let's say whether you go to a car mechanic right or i go to a car mechanic they should respond exactly the same and actually, it is a very interesting thing that happened even, you know, just, um, you know, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was in India, my wife was here and, you know, one of the tree in our backyard kind of, you know, cracked it, like kind of is dying. So she asked the gardener, okay, how much would you charge to, you know, pull it out? He gave a specific figure, like literally $500. Wow. So she said, okay, you know, I'll think about it. She, you know, and I came back and I, you know, and uh, when the gardener showed up, I asked him, okay, how much are you going to charge, you know, to pull this out? He said $100. So the question, see, the, now the question is, I think the bigger question is, how do we raise our children so that they stop stereotyping and behaving this way when they grow up. Because that's where the seed is. Now, my question to you is, you go and talk to your you know, in-laws, you talk to your own parents, and ask them, do they treat you and your brother the same, or do your in-laws, you know, the if you go and say something to them and their son goes and something says something to them, would they give you equal weightage? The problem starts from there. Wouldn't agree. And, but right? even so now in, my question is, let's say even in have, 200 years, I don't think so. My mom can ever treat my brother and me equally. And I'll give you an instance. Uh, hmm. My brother was not well. He was in the US. He was not well. And my mom came to know somehow that he's not well. He just told me nobody else. And th at that time, we couldn't make that much phone calls. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he was giving surprise and he just uh, wanted to come unannounced that. And I mm -hmm. wanted to, he said, I wanted to give surprise. I was the only one who knew that he's coming mm -hmm. so that, you know, people are there at home and he should not be getting a surprise that nobody's mm -hmm. at home. Yeah, so you yeah, have to yeah, take yeah, one yeah. person in confidence on. And my mom knew both the times when he was sick. She came to know when uh, he was giving surprise. She came to know. She came. Yes, uh, I gave surprise. I was the vibes. I her unannounced. My mom did not know. She was like, "Oh, okay, you hear that's a pleasant surprise and all." And I was really not <laughs> happy about it. That you couldn't, your instinct could uh, couldn't make out that I was there. Yeah, you see, I was not my, well. and that's exactly that's exactly my point. That you know, we we seem you no, know, and you know, I've had this discussion even you know with my friends or even at work right. and my my pain point is that we are only curing or trying to treat symptom we are not curing the disease you are not going to the root cause you you as a let's say you you have a son right tomorrow let's say you you had son and daughter look in your heart for mom and tell me yeah for moms younger ones will always be closest to them so now my question is why See, this, now 
what you're saying is we are human beings we are not computers that you are designed then, like then why are, then why are you complaining the, about then why are you complaining I'm about I'm not complaining about that she uh she like she didn't realize that I was in the hospital and uh you know no no I, I'm not talking about that I'm not talking that's that's really not my complaint my hmm. complaint is that why are you even saying that we treat both of you equally? We love both of you equally, except the fact you don't. You love him more. It's okay. If someone comes and asks me that whom do you love most more, your dad or your mom? I'll say, okay, I yeah. used to love my dad more when I was not married. But after getting married, yeah. I yeah. understand what my mom have been through. And now I love her more. Pause for a second and think about five leaders Okay. that you want to follow. You don't need to name them. Right. Just so think in your head. Yes. Yeah. Right. So now you tell me the five names that came to your mind, how many were women? First one was women. The rest followed. <laughs> so so one out of five, right? Now the yes. question is that even if you look at all, you know, you know the world, the gods and the you know saints and all that, all men. Now the so the problem is that moving forward, how do we make sure that we seed the ground that this perception goes away in spite of understanding that we will be different? To help people understand, let me first you know, give the context of what I think that we should, where we should erase the difference and where should we not be bothered about differences. You know, equality versus where should be equal versus not. I think that equality is similar to let you have a same level field and everybody is individually standing on that. You know, like uh, you're standing on the railway platform. You are different, but you're at the same level. That means you have the same opportunities. You have, you know, freedom or, you know, you will not be discriminated against if you have the ability and everything, right? Or desire to do something. The problem I have is when people try to compensate for, you know, because of gender, they say, okay, even if you are less able than the other person, you know, it's like the, you know, uh, what you call as reservations and, you know, things like that. Now that, that actually will create more problem than actually solving the problem. And forget about genders, right? Let's say tomorrow I have two male or two females as part of my team. Their performance will be different, right? Absolutely. Now if I'm so now if I'm and I have seen this multiple times, you know, and uh, you know and. The equality where it gets abused is also, you know, rampant. We don't talk about it. Um, but now let's say, you know, I see one person who is even performing less and say, you know, he's also working hard and everything. Let me pay him equal to the high performer. What do you think will happen to the high performer? That person will get demotivated yes, or will quit. yes absolutely right. so that i so that is where i think what society and you know with all the businesses and all that is focusing on that versus focusing on the root cause of the perceptions the stereotyping and all so my focus has always been that hey there will be differences in the output and outcome of individuals there we have to stick to meritocracy and you know what we want to do what we want to do best now equal opportunity yes you know we may need to make sure that everybody has same equal opportunity you know equal output you have to measure but i disagree with where you have to equalize the pay for everybody irrespective of their performance you have to equalize the promotion you have to equalize things irrespective of you know what the person is contributing at, at least in the workforce, you know, now in, in society context, you know, the questions and answers would be different. Rajiv, coming to uh, workspace and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I have worked, I was in Nagpur, I was in Calcutta, I was everywhere and I have given tons and tons and tons of interviews. 
questions were never like what you know what you don't know so questions were like so you're newly married yes when are you planning kids long way ago at that also you have been married for two years when are you planning kids long way to go for and i was really really and it's not like that uh you know uh this is after marriage even when i was not married question was so when are you planning to get married and i used to tell them that i'm engaged but marriage is long way to go and i'm here for a long time See, but i his, really don't I want, want to you there. i want to interrupt you there yes right. now I, why did you answer the question my my you know this is one of the you know, i need the job have. beggars no, are not no, choosers no, doesn't, no you don't need the wrong job you see this is where i would highly encourage people to start thinking about standing up for yourself and i'll tell you you know now this is not can. something yes now the market is such that they can but uh, no gunjan no you are mistaken and and the other thing let me give you my example so if you, know, you I, get rejected after rejected after rejected after like uh, you know after 6 months of uh, getting all the rejections you need to learn to be polite and answer in diplomatic manner otherwise uh, that gap will keep increasing and it's not like that uh, you know i'm in a stable government job that no matter what my job will stay or things like that and gap might increase and it will not impact my pay scale and then like you have to justify this and then you have to justify why do you have so much of gap on your resume then there'll be two things to justify but the same thing happens with men you know how many interviews i have gone through in the last one year and how many people how many people have asked that when are you getting uh, married and when are you having kids and stuff no, like but they now but they now ask me what is your age they see my white hair <laughs> and they ask me the same thing <laughs> like not directly <laughs> right right so what i'm saying now when you know i remember when i was looking for a job the, the, when i was starting you know, and i was in the i will not disclose the name of the company but you know i in one interview they asked me what does your father you know in those days you would write your whatever resume you would write your family family history right like, you know right right so now the you know the interviewer asked you know your dad has a very good business why are you looking for a job very similar question my response was that you know that's my that's my dad's business what that what does that have to do with me looking for a job another interview i know i I'm, see i'm telling i'm trying to give you examples that it is not just women it is men they also face similar but different questions you know this one guy you know asked me do you play tennis and i'm a, you know at that time i was a programmer Mm-hmm. so i was very clear i said are you going to hire me for my tennis skills or my programming skills be very clear question is were you hired both of yes i got so, offers from both but you see what my and even today you know my attitude and my approach is that you have to understand that it is not just you are going to get a job you are going to work there with the same people if you do not like their mindset you will be miserable if you do not like the mind and this is where i go back to saying that we to solve the problem we have to change the mindset and problem is that the mindset does not get changed retroactively unless individuals work on themselves and nowhere i have seen people willing to work on themselves especially you know and you know i'm not like stereotyping but i have seen that people at least in the us right they would and they would introspect they will invest in themselves and they will work on themselves i have seen the opposite behavior in india or you know many other countries you know i used to manage hmm. india has uh, changed right india has changed a lot and it, it uh, may have you know but yes. at least even 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 10 years ago you know i would face people who come in who would only say you know people would take pride in that you know we are like this only take it or leave it so you know if you take and the problem is that you know if you are proud of something you will never change it no matter what it is so the equality gender equality perception stereotyping all of that will only change if we as parents we as leaders enforce that behavior rajiv coming to uh gender equality disparity and uh, like there's a huge huge revolution going on 
at workplace and everything. Question for uh, listeners and uh, Raji, for you as well. Why do we make this ruckus only at workplace? Any girl, I... any girl, any girl, will she go to her parents and say that, you know, give me share in the property? Why is my brother inheriting everything? And see, my we question are is, never, no, no, sorry, we are never it, given this. Uh, no, my, see, my question is again, you're missing my question. My question is that why should a daughter have to even ask that question to her parents? I would fault the parents. I would say that means that you are telling your children, your girls, that you are inferior or you don't deserve it. Then, then why? No, and this the is simple where, funda you know, is very... no, no. The simple funda is that you know why people are like why there is so much of desire of having a boy, so yeah, that, that someone no, the, that so that, that someone see, will take care of them when they are old that was the only thing people had in their uh, mind and someone to take their legacy forward that is also in there patriarchy but... destroys society you know right the entire mahabharat was fought because of desire right. for a boy right right if you look at european countries it doesn't matter girl or a boy the legacy will be no, taken it does. It does. no no legacy no, will be taken forward by the ab most able kid not okay Give me, give me example of Western leaders. Well, if I think of it, what I have read in history, only male conquerors. Men, yes. Men, Napoleon, okay. Genghis right. Khan. So, or... so my, my point is that it is a universal issue. Right. And, and the, and the, so now going back to what you were trying to say and what you started with, are we trying to solve a problem that is unsolvable? We are trying to change the mindset. It's not a problem. It's just a matter of mindset that we need to bring shift in. I agree on that. There are two, you know, I always look at things two ways, right? So one is that there's a legislative behavior. Right. You bring in legal laws, you know, and then people will start behaving in a certain way because nobody wants to get on the wrong side of the law. But that is not, that is, you know, that is treating the symptom. My emphasis has always been that go to the root cause of the problem and bring a social change or whatever change you want to bring at the root cause. What that means is forget about what previous generations have done. You cannot do anything about that. Raji, previous generation, was, previous generation was much, 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 much better than what we are today. In a way, I agree with you. Right. And I will actually, if you, you know, if you, you think of all the gods, be it Ram, Krishna, anybody, right? We had uh, Maharishi Vashisht or our great yeah, our, Guru yeah, Chare, God, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, we yeah, celebrate yeah. 5th September in memory of uh, our second president, Dr. Sarpalli Radha Krishnan. All men, all teachers, great, great teachers. If you talk about Rabindranath Tagore, great teacher of all the times. Yeah. So, Previously, we were much, much better than what we are but now. No, but now, question, my question: All the names that you have taken are male teachers. They are absolutely, not... absolutely. That's what, exactly my point. That previously we were doing much, much better than what we are doing now. Going back to what I was trying to say is that let's forget what the previous, like even you know, in the recent history, right? Because what we are today is what we were taught by our parents. Yes. Right. So that's why I want to go back and I want to ask the listeners and even you and I ask myself again you know I have two daughters which you know but you ask both of them they have the same problem that you know we, we, you know mom loves which who, you know more now there's no there's no gender other, disparity here but still other one is know, adopted other one <laughs> yeah yeah you know the, and and there's a you know the younger one will say you love the elder one more and vice versa now the question is that what are we doing as parents? You know, you, me, the current generation, the listeners and everybody to stop this behavior moving forward, to stop educating and or, you know, to stop pushing this into our children's mind. I can tell you, I look at, you know, all even the, you know, young people today, they treat their, you know, daughters differently than their, you know, uh, sons, even three-year-old, two-year-old. Now, the seed of this disparity or this discrimination is already in the mind of a child. 
by 7 to 10 years old, he or she has already internalized. Rajiv, no, that's, no matter that's what you know, now you're no, just... No, no. Rajiv, that's an age problem. When a kid is, and what I have seen, most of the kindergartners, why they get into yeah. so much of behavioral issues, because that's the time when kid is a little bit settled and parents are like, okay, this is the right time to go for the second kid. That's what we have seen, like from pre-K uh, to K is the time when kids are getting younger siblings and all. And they feel bad about it because both the parents are focused upon about that kid. His sleep time, his eating time, his everything. Please don't shout. Kid is sleeping. Please don't do this. Kid is sleeping. Please don't do that. Kid will get hurt. You are more like a babysitter for that kid. And then, you know, feeding that kid 24 cross 7, you are with that kid. Of course, elder kid will feel bad. On the contrary, on the contrary, when you are filling forms for uh, your elder one, when he's going to college or you are, you know, deciding that what that's, this kid will do, you are so engrossed with that elder kid that younger one will feel bad that, you know, am I adopted? Nobody's even looking at me. Nobody's even asking me what I want or what I don't want. And when that kid is out and then that kid comes back home, you are just preparing for that kid. If you ask your mom to make that favorite dish, she'll be like, okay, your brother is coming next week. I'll make it when he's here. Like, I'm also your kid. Why can't you make it now? And when he's here, make it again. So that... Then then essentially what you are saying is that we are not ever going to solve the problem. It cannot be. It's it's a very time-based problem, Rajiv. And it's the urgency of the hour, if I can put it like that. Like okay. that kid who cannot, he the only way that that kid can communicate is by crying. A wow. newborn. Till the time he is independent like little bit independent right that's the only way that kid will communicate and it's very human for the elder one to feel bad now when you are a teenager there is a lot going on in your life lot mm-hmm. going on and again colleges and everything it's it's a total mess it is, it is parents yes. parents need to give that focus that love that attention everything to that elder one and then, of course, younger one will be, and there's no measuring uh, weighing scale that, you know, I've given this much of love to this much, this much of time to this much. So I have to give equal yeah, amount every, of love. Yeah, every kid, yeah, it's every different, kid is you know, different. Their needs are different, different, uh, different. are different. Right, yes. right. If, yes, I if uh, you ask me, communication is the key that, darling, when you were young, our complete focus was on you. Currently, the elder one needs us more. We will be more focused on that kid. Please do not feel bad about it. This is just a phase and it will go through and we will sail through and then we just... But this... see, the question, the challenge becomes, let's say there are two, you know, uh, if you have children and like, you know, I have two daughters, right? It's easier. But when you have a boy and a girl, then suddenly the lens changes to gender disparity or g- gender equality. So my question is, that anyway we treat everybody unequally. So then why are we saying that you know we have to have equality between men and women? We are talking about opportunities. We are talking about what we are saying should create the same kind of impact. The what what if the ability is different? You know, you have let's say both of us are given the same opportunity. Right. You no, know, my output will be different from your output. Absolutely. The way right. we think, now the by design, I am different. By design, you are different. Yes. Our DNAs now the, are different. Now the question is, now the question is that if you are, you know, let's say, you know, let's say that I perform better than you. So are you saying that to make us feel equal, the output should be measured differently? Opportunity should be same. That's why we have all these performance management and you know, all these reviews and everything. So then, so, so then you're agreeing with me it, philosophically. It's, it's, it should be like given the same platform. But again, how you are taking it. Sometimes, yes, someone needs more of handholding. Women will take maternity break. And you just never know uh, how much break they will take. It can be six months. It can be six years till the time kid is not going to kindergarten. There can be kids with special needs. And generally, it's a mom who takes a hit on their career compared to dads. So yes, equal opportunity, again, not saying that, uh, you know, uh, 
based it should be a based on the performance but that's after a year but before that yes who's working hard who's doing it and uh, parents grow old kids need them parents need them it's the same thing with the men and with the women it's not like that only women uh, have these things that you know we have to do this 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 and uh, men are like completely focused on work that's not the case Kids need so that. So it is. It is uh, uh, there it's are two things that here is actually multiple things. So one, the situation. Let's say you know when uh, when the family happens, right? The woman, because of biology and everything, woman is the person who takes a break. Right. Right. So you are gone. Let's say four months, three months, four months, six months, whatever. Now the question is that for that period of time the you know, person who is in the office is still working is performing better now how do we make sure that we you know, give that confidence to the woman that when you re-enter the workforce you will have the same opportunity i think that is the question to be asked for us for everybody second i think the more important question is that uh, the woman if she is stepping up to take care of the family maybe for a year, for five years, for 10 years, then how do we make sure that we have an easy re-entry of the person so that she can also have a fulfilling career and you know, whatever the, her heart desires. I think those, if we start focusing on solving the problem that exists, I think most of these questions will disappear. The problem, why they will not disappear and why it the way I think the industry and everybody or all the you know pseudo-liberals are going after this thing is that they are saying, we don't care whether the person is performing or not performing, you have to equalize it. We don't care about whether this thing and all that you have to. So then they start setting up quotas, then they start setting up that, which will have more worse effect. Actually, my take is that it will create more negative it is between this thing and will actually create more biases rather than reducing the bias agreed. and that is where i have a problem with it agreed agreed to this point but oh, we, finally we, we agree no 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 i'm agreeing <laughs> but i'm putting my point as well that uh you know no matter what performance and all it I really don't know it, which world it happens, but yes, we keep a very close watch on performances and everything. And we do uh, uh, offer help, trainings and everything. My problem here is that when people look at women and look at their promotions and everything, the look on their face, and sometimes they say also, oh, you're a woman, it must be very easy for you to, uh, you know, get the promotion and uh, be in front yes, of leadership. Of what, all. Boss, no, I am also working hard. Look at my ratings. Look at the my, time no, I'm I, I agree with you. I, I am when I leave with you, office but... at 3, when I leave office at 3 or 4 p.m. and people are like, oh, half day, I was like, you know, I was in office uh, when you were not even away. There are times when I reach office at 7 a.m. as well. So, and nobody sees that. My, you are, you are actually supporting my point. You are supporting my point. That is exactly what I'm saying. That because of the way we are trying to solve the problem, industry and society and all that, is actually creating a you know, negative effect. And trust me, if you are in a leadership role, you're not stupid. If you have reached there, you're not no, stupid. No, no, I, 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 the, I disagree with but that the statement. Look, no, but the stupidity look has nothing. Give. Stupidity has nothing to do with leadership. I have seen fantastic leaders who are also fantastic stupid. They're stupid in different ways. And no, I'm serious about it. You know, I have you know, I have like worked across, you know, like India, US, I've seen people, you know, I manage teams from Ireland, China, Israel, you know, multi Europe, multiple countries. And I'm telling you, stupidity has nothing to do with your rank or your leadership style. I always say that the mindset has to change. Perception has to change. And this can only change either we individually work on ourselves by reminding ourselves every time or we as parents starting to educate our the next generation. I don't think that I can ever go back and change my parents' mind. Not right? possible. So, 
So, so not, don't even try to solve the problem that cannot be solved. Solve the problem that can be solved and you can contribute to it. The problem I have is with pseudo-liberals and all these people who are forcing us to solve the problem in the wrong way. I think we will have much bigger problem at our hand in 10 years down the line than what we have today. And Rajiv, dealing with a problem without even knowing that we are dealing with a problem is a bigger problem. Identify the problem which is not getting identified. And I have heard these things and I, I could actually, you know, see that on the looks. And, I, and my sister and I, we talk a lot. And people tell her that, oh, that, you know, it's easy for girls. It's like, no, it's not easy for girls. It's really not easy. So, how, so let me ask you, how would you solve the problem? I, I gave my, you know, uh, reasoning. No, how I have my own comebacks. I have my own comebacks. Mm. And I tell them that, uh, you know, I am carrying a monkey. I have a break and I have worked really, really, really hard. If you have seen, you have seen me online throughout. I, If I say I have charged nine hours, I ensure that I work nine hours. I, I will give you a better comeback. Next time somebody says that, you can say my productivity is 2x your productivity. So what you do in four hours, I do in one hour. See, the thing is, we, my, and I keep you know, telling my daughters also this. And, you know, I, I, and I, you know, I have, you know, I mentor, you know, people. So, especially women, I tell them, you know, you have to be bold and you have to be strong. You have to stand your ground. Don't take shit. That I don't. That I don't. And no, you do. Certain, my... No, you are like, you know, you are the Lai Lama right now. <laughs> I, that was you big are? part that was a very very beginning of my career and really nowhere I could see that I am going to stay in this city for long term so I could not afford to have a very long gap on my resume understand my problems as well I, I understand that you know and, and that's it's even, not like I got my the problem job. too you know it's today not I like have I got, got the job I, you know I did not even get the job because I could not uh, convince them that you know uh, having a family or something like that is a long way to go and I'm thankful if I pause and reflect I'm like thankful that uh, you know I didn't work with these people and I've worked with fantastic people in my life I'm really thankful to all of them but yes what I was 20 years ago I am not that today trust yeah, me I'm I am sure, not sure. and the I'm kind sure. of yeah. and the kind of uh, you know discussions and uh, brainstorming that I have in office is at a different level altogether. And sometimes I give a look that I don't even think so. I want to answer your question. <laughs> and I say, which is good. Which is good. You and should, I say it with my you eyes. Show some, show some attitude. You know. And right. the thing is that, the, you see, coming back to the point that we are discussing, discrimination, you know, disparities, you know, biases and all that, in society or at workforce or even at home, you know, have to be actively addressed and have to be addressed at the right time, at the right place, and have to be worked upon every day. This is not something that you check mark that is done once and it's you know, over. You have to educate your children that they have to be very conscious about it. It doesn't come only with then this will change. It Otherwise, comes... we are just we otherwise we are just not treating the symptom, not curing the disease. Uh, but uh, Rajiv, it doesn't come with the uh, education. It comes like what kids see. Yes, they, exactly. That's, that's... Like you said, like you said, you know, if, parents, if our parents behave, you know, discriminate between a boy and a girl, then yes, we will. We we are, you know, we grow up with that. Now the question is, now the burden of effort is on each individual. Do you want to continue that path or do you want to sit back and reflect and say, no, I am not going to be like this. And that is hard work. Not everybody wants to do that hard work, you know, it to is. introspect and to improve, you know, it is very, very tough. Well, that was quite a discussion, Rajiv, and in interest of time, we have to. Uh... But I, you know, I, I the one thing I wanted to, you know, share that I, yes. when I was growing up, you know, I was like very young, my grandfather and my grandmother. So in those days, you know, they, they used to have hookah, mm -hmm. right? So I very distinctly remember whenever I used to visit my grandparents, uh, you know, in Punjab. 
and uh, when everything is done all the kids are gone to sleep you know my grandfather and my grandmother would wind up her kitchen and all that and it's like time to go to bed my grandfather will make the hookah and first offer it to her <laughs> it was like every time you know this was uh, that actually gave me a very different perspective he yes. would not have the hookah first he will you know he will start preparing it when she, he saw that my grandmother was not cleaning up the kitchen winding it up and you know as when my grandmother you know sat on the whatever bed to sleep you know the hookah was offered to her first so maybe if but, you know that's that subtle that subtle signal mm -hmm. you know think about it that gave me a very different perspective about equality yes my my grandfather never said that i will work in the kitchen you know to, to be equal that i also have to work out in the kitchen and you also have to go and earn money never said that but right. small gestures yes. where you treat each other equally that's what i'm saying we as parents have to demonstrate to our children in action absolutely. and in thought absolutely even this is something i i advocate that respect comes from both ways when uh, there's a stay home mom and husband comes from office and he says that you know what did you do all day and then wife is also thinking that you are not with army or a farmer you didn't do any drill or you did not you know uh, did any you sat at your desk <laughs> yes <laughs> you sat at your at your desk and it uh, i mean sitting at desk is also quite exhausting but while yeah, yeah. I'm it is work. That work is work it is work yes work is work but again it takes quite a mental toll all i'm trying to say is that it's a very mutual thing mm. it's a very respect is very mutual thing if you want respect you have to give respect yes and yes. it starts from home. So, yes. And this, I mean, what silently you are putting it in your kid's head when you're asking, what did you do all day? Yes. Is something that I condemn. And I, I say that this, this question that, should that's be where like, I come back to, I, that's where exactly I come back to the point I was making, or I have made multiple times. So I would say that, you know, as closing comments, uh, let our listeners pause and reflect how are they seeding these thoughts in their mind and in their children's mind and then you should not complain about the outcome you get right and one thing that i want to leave our listeners with that are we progressing or are we regressing do yes do leave comments and do let us know if you would like to come to our show and we can have a good discussion about this topic again. Please log oh, yeah. in. Any, yeah. All topics are can be revisited. Right. So these these are not something that is only like a check marker. That, yes. Done and yes. All. Absolutely. These are Absolutely. introspective journeys we have to take and we have to peel the onion until it makes you cry. Yes. And and then, you know, why are we fighting this battle so hard? And at what cost? Exactly. Do let us know. Do comment on thelailama.com, T H E L I E L L A M A.com. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.